Happy Sunday everyone! In today's video, we're going to build a very simple back tester to see what tends to happen in the S&P after it's had one of these sell-off days. In particular, we're curious about the very next day only. Do we see selling continue here where sellers ride this momentum down lower? Or do we instead, contrary to what I imagine intuition would suggest, see buyers stepping in, viewing this move as exhaustive, and really bringing price action up higher? That's the question I'm looking to answer in today's video, and we'll write some simple ThinkScript code to make that process a lot easier. Now before we start writing some code, let me quickly recap what our bias has been headed into this move. Our bias has very much been bearish. I've laid out the four reasons in the video on August 20th. The overall notion really stems from the fact that we had a downtrending channel, we were towards the top end of that downtrending channel, and we had just closed inside of it with our overbought signal. That was this candle right here with the red arrow. Since then, we've had price action gap down lower, try and hold that shorter term trend line, and then we had Friday's very big meltdown. So now let's go ahead and start writing some code to see what tends to happen after we have days like this. To get started, click the studies icon, switch over to the strategies tab, and then click create. Now inside of this code, this is going to be some very simple code. I don't think we'll need more than maybe three or four lines at most. So let's call this something like TI, SPY, research, give it whatever name you'd like. And the first value inside that we're going to define is what we consider to be our threshold. What is this percentage move that we'd like to measure and use as our entry point? What do we call a meltdown? So there I'll say input threshold, and let's call our threshold 3%. So if the S&P has fallen more than 3%, it's going to buy the very next day and exit on the closing price of that candle. So the next thing we then need is to define the actual movement. What has been the move from the open to the closing price? So let's define that. We'll say def move. And there we can take our closing price, subtract it from our opening price, and then divide it by our open price again to get a percentage change for that day. Now with these two values, we can start defining our add order condition already. That's how simple this code is. So let me delete the existing add order code here. And we can start writing our own add order condition. So we'll say add order, order type, buy to open. And we'd like to buy if our move right here is less than the threshold value that we just suggested. So if our percentage move for the day is less than 3%, then go ahead and buy on the very next candle. So we'll say open and set that to a value of one and we'll say close, sell to close. Our closing order on this is always going to be true and we're just going to use the day's closing price with the same quantity of one. Now let's test this out to see if this is working the way we would expect and if not, we can make any adjustments or tweaks as necessary. Click OK, click apply, and now we have a floating PL on our charts. If you don't see that on your end, click this global strategy settings button. And there, make sure display floating PL study which strategies is turned on. Now I'll click OK, back out of it, zoom out so we can see what data points this is taking. Our first trade that it's evaluating is right here. That was June 11th, 2020. Between our open to our close price, that is greater than the 3%. So that's working the way we would expect. Let's right click, click show report to see what the open price it's used is. The open price it's used on June uh, 11th or June 12th rather is 311.46 and it's getting out at 300.61. Let's see if that value is correct. Our opening price the next day was 308.24, not the 311.46 that we're seeing. That 311.46 was from the meltdown day. So let's go ahead and fix that little bug inside of our code. Come back into our studies menu, click the scroll icon to open up this code. And where we have move here, we're actually looking to see if that move was true on the previous bar, the previous bars move. So there, we'll use that. If that's the case, click apply. Okay, apply. Now do we have the correct value being taken? So this was the day we had our meltdown. Right click, show report. And now we can see that the opening price it's using is the 308.24 that we would expect. 
The closing price of this candle was 304.21, and that's what we have being recorded right here as well. Now let's zoom out and take a look to see what has happened. Overall here, our P&L graph is showing green, which means buying, which would be counterintuitive, has actually been the better move for the very next day. If we take a look to see how far back this is going, this is testing five years, really starting off with this move right here. This was our first meltdown candle. The very next green candle is the price action that it's using to trade and use as our open and closing prices. And we can see what happens there. We close green here. The very next day, or two days after rather, we have another big bearish move. Again, after that, our open and our close price is still a green candle, marginally green, but still green counter to what I imagine intuition would suggest. Keep coming forward here. In our Feb to March decline, we had a series of these. Becomes a lot easier to review this by right clicking and viewing the report here, where we can see really it's one, two, and three trades that are really making up a bulk of our PL here. Now let's expand this beyond five years to the max available data that we have available. If we use the max available data now, zoom out and take a look at what our PNL report here is suggesting. This is going all the way back to 1997 and beyond that. So it's also in, uh, encompassing the 2000 crash here. Come all the way forward and let's review what the PNL report is showing us. For the most part here, our PNL is still green over 48 different times that we've had this greater than 3% move. You can now use this report to very quickly go back, study these individual times, Maybe try and find some patterns or commonalities between the places where we had the greatest dollar amount versus also the places where we've had the lowest dollar amount, something like this $7 loss. So hopefully through this very short video, you learned how you can write some very simple thing script code here. This took us, what, four lines to try and make researching meltdown days like the one that we had on Friday a much easier and streamlined process. Again, we are still looking for continued bearish activity here, really targeting at the very least the midline of this overall downtrending channel, but for the most part, it's this lower end of the downtrending channel that we're targeting. However, we also know that along that way, it's not a straight free fall down, but instead we're going to see buyers step in as well, and for the most part, our research here suggests that the very next day, after one of these meltdown days, we actually see a little bit more buying activity than selling activity. At least that's what the PL graph would suggest. I hope you found this video to be useful. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading this upcoming week, and we'll see you in the next update.